Hey guys, in this video, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about some of the common terminology that we continuously hear, as well as to explain to you just a little bit about how a network is laid out, uh, to give you just a little bit more information about how these systems work. What we have here is we are logged in to the Medicis Extended Architecture System. Over on the left-hand side of our panel here, you can see where the mouse is moving around. This is going to be our network tree. This is where we're going to find a lot of our devices. Now, depending on your level of um, usership, you may or may not see this. Some folks will only have a limited amount of uh, usership within their system they may not be able to see everything that is within the system uh, you know that may be set uh, by your uh, system administrators uh, for me i do have administrative rights on this so that's why i am able to see virtually everything here what i want to begin with is explaining a little bit about how the network is laid out within a particular building, uh, within a particular campus, as far as that goes, the institution, the first item you're going to see here at the top is going to be the ADX. This is the server, and there are several options as far as the types of servers that are out there. Uh, a system as large as ours does require a very large server to be able to do the things necessary. Uh, if you have just a few devices, you can get away with having a desktop sized server as part of your system. And the individual devices are going to communicate with the server. Now that is uh, something that uh, you've probably seen some of my other videos to where I've actually gone in and set up the particular NAEs on uh, setting those up to communicate with the server. But in order to get a building up and running, it isn't necessarily a requirement to have a server within the system. A server is something that's just going to add a lot of convenience. It's going to give you the ability to run, uh, to store backups of your database, to have graphics, uh, that sort of thing, user views. Generally, if you were to use a standard NAE and not really have anything else uh, within your system, when you log into it, you would be logging directly into the NAE, and this is what you would be seeing here. You're, you would not necessarily be seeing everything that uh, is within an entire system. You would only be seeing what is in that particular building or that particular device. So the server is a way of being able to see an entire site at one time. And to break that down a little bit more, of course, a server is on the network, of course. It is on the local area network, and each of these devices are as well. The NAEs, the NIEs, all of these devices are connected directly to the local area network. Now, for those of you all who may not be familiar with the difference between an NAE or an NCE, an NAE, that acronym stands for Network Automation Engine. Okay, that's basically what those devices are. They are a communication go-between uh, for the system to be able to talk to the individual controllers. An NCE is Network Controller Engine. This device is actually going to have hardware points on the device itself. The difference between the NAE and the NCE is just that. An NCE can function as an NAE as well as a controller. Uh, depending on the building, depending on the system, these are uh, basically a single device that does a dual function. Now, when you get into a lot of buildings that have a lot of devices, you may be limited on the 
uh, type of NCE that you can go with. Uh, that's where an NAE will generally come into play. You can get these larger NAEs are able to handle a lot more points and that sort of thing. But if you're doing a simple air handler control or you have a small facility, an NCE may help uh, eliminate the need for a controller as far as an FEC and still give you the ability to talk to the remaining devices within your building, such as VMAs or uh, hot water system controllers or just whatever. It really depends on what you're using in your particular system. Now, we have here, this is going to be the field bus trunk. I know I have had questions before as far as people wondering what the difference between a trunk is, what that means and all that. Each of your devices is going to have a way to communicate with the individual controllers that are under it. Uh, for this particular building, we are talking with air handlers. That's what each of these are. These are FEC controllers that are on particular air handlers. This one here is actually on the particular NCE. Literally, the points that are going out to these various, uh, like the supply fan command and that sort of thing, these are landed directly on the NCE. Okay, that NCE also is able to communicate with other devices. We have other FEC controllers within the building, and this one is basically going to eliminate the need for having to have an additional NCE. We had to buy an NCE or an NAE, and then, of course, the additional controllers. This basically eliminates the need of buying an, F, an additional FAC. You know, we just buy one device instead of two. Uh, this device here, of course, communicates under the same trunk. This is basically a mini network underneath the NCE. It's the same with an NAE, okay? Uh, you have here, uh, this is an N2 trunk. This is an older trunk. We'll get just a little bit more into the difference between N2 and BACnet shortly. But an NAE uh, is going to be performing the same functions. These are basically a sub-network underneath each of these individual devices uh, that allows each of these devices to transmit information back to the NAE and then the NAE transfer that information to the ADX server. And that's how we're able to see an entire site. Now, I'm just throwing a lot of stuff out there for you guys. I know that this can be a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff out there. It takes time to pick up on a lot of this. But basically what we're doing, an NAE or an NCE is basically the head of a small network of its own. All right, this is a network for this particular NCE. Uh, these trunks here, these two here are sub networks basically for this NAE and again these NAEs connect to the local area network which allows them to talk to the ADX. Now as far as what I meant by trunks these devices do have the capability as far as like the larger ones the 55s they can have multiple sub networks there's literally on this particular device two plugs each of these trunks will go out to a selected number of controllers. Okay, you can see the list of controllers underneath trunk one, N2-1. The same can be said for N2-2. We can see that trunk here. Something that you need to be aware of. Now, if you guys are familiar with networking, you know that you cannot have one device uh, that has you know multiple addresses for uh, devices on your system. You cannot have two devices that have the exact same address, okay? Having two trunks, this is basically two different networks. You can have device addresses that are identical when you're going to two different trunks. Now, that may be a bit confusing, but basically this is two separate networks. 
and that's how that works. You've got N2-1, that's trunk one, and then trunk two. Two separate networks. There are literally two separate cable runs for each of these two trunks. And that's why in some systems like this where there are multiple trunks, you can find ha uh, devices that have the same address. You know, they cannot be under the same trunk, but they can be under the same uh, NAE. Uh, you know, that's very common to see in systems like this. Now, normally we would not do that, such as a smaller system like this. If you have just a single trunk, all the devices must have their own unique address. Okay, you cannot have uh, the same address for multiple devices. They're just not going to talk. Most of the time they'll just, just go offline or uh, your network is going to be very unstable. Now, the difference between what you see here, the N2 and this one here, the FCB, uh, these devices here are BACnet. These devices here are N2. What does that mean? Well, BACnet devices, uh, that is basically, it is a communication standard. Uh, it is basically the language that these devices will talk. Uh, BACnet devices are, the BACnet itself is generally like an industry standard. You know, you can have devices that talk BACnet put out by different manufacturers and they are able to talk with one another. Uh, if you had a, uh, let's just say an easy IO controller somewhere in a device uh, that talked BACnet, you could pull those points into a Johnson control system. Uh, you know, just doing the auto discover feature. N2 is a Johnson Controls proprietary communication standard. Okay, that's basically Johnson Controls own custom language. That's the difference on that. These two cannot coexist under the current way that the networks are structured. You cannot have BACnet devices talking BACnet on the same trunk as N2 devices talking N2. They just will not work currently. There are changes that come out all of the time. I know when some of the BACnet devices first started coming out on the market that uh, from, or from Johnson Controls, that there was a certain way that you could get BACnet devices to talk into. Uh, you can put some of the BACnet devices onto the N2 trunk today, but you're basically converting them to talk as an N2 device. And there are some issues with that that we've seen. Uh, those networks are generally bogged down by that, just the way that it functions. Uh, you know, if you had to replace a controller or two, it might not be that big of an issue, depending on what uh, rev of Metasys that you're using. But we have seen it to where devices that are placed onto an N2 trunk can actually slow down that trunk, that particular trunk. But that is some of the basic principles uh, of this metasis, of the network structure, of some of the communication. And again, guys, I know that there's just a lot of things that I'm throwing out at you, but I wanted to give you just a little bit better understanding. I get people asking me questions about that, so I just thought I would do a quick video about it. Now, we've talked about the trunks as far as some of the things that's under those, but what we also see underneath the BACnet or underneath the NAEs is uh, these folders and these folders you can have various programming you can have your schedules uh, and that sort of thing and these are basically a mini computer of their own they're basically a mini server of their own uh, generally a building should be able to run standalone based off of just the information and the programming that is inside an NAE a step beyond that if your building is set up correctly, it's a good idea to keep as much programming down to the controller level as possible. That way, if you ever have an issue with an NAE, the controllers themselves can still run. So that's just a little bit of practical advice for that. But guys, this is just a quick video that I wanted to do, give you a little bit better understanding about the way that these are related to each other. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things about it. It just takes time, 
of working with these before you're able to fully understand it. But anyways, guys, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Also, check out the description. I have got some affiliate links down there to some of the tools that I use. Um, that way, it kind of helps to support the channel. If you purchase anything through those links, it doesn't cost you anything, but I do get a commission off of those. Guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Check out the rest of the videos on the channel, and we will see you next time.